Right, so we have seen how to define infinite dimensional manifolds. And we want to define now tangent spaces and the tangent manifold of such an infinite dimensional manifold um, to understand uh, or to, to be able to, to work later on better with the CR mappings between uh, uh, these infinite dimensional manifolds. And well, it turns out that one of the easiest definitions of how you can define the tangent space in finite dimensions um, just generalizes to um, infinite dimensions. Um, okay, let's let's see. Let's uh, say M is a CR manifold, um, where R is greater or equal than one. So we're not doing topological manifolds anymore. We need uh, really differentiable one, modeled uh, on uh, a locally convex space E, and let's fix a point P. In M. Um, uh, C1 curve, gamma, uh, passes through um, P if uh, gamma of zero is uh, P. So, on, I mean, obviously, implicitly, uh, zero needs to be in the domain of gamma, but. Uh, so uh, we're not bothering with with these details. So for gamma and eta passing uh, through uh, P, we define an equivalence relation gamma should be equivalent to eta by definition if and only if um, Whenever I have a chart phi composed with gamma, take the derivative at zero. This should be the same as uh, when I do this for the other curve. Zero uh, for uh, any chart phi, u phi of m such that p is contained in U5. And uh, note that uh, by insertion of charts, if um, in the script this relation is 1.8, if 1.8 holds uh, for one chart, five. Then it also holds for every chart of M. Right. So um, if we can test it in one, then we have uh, we have it um, for okay. And uh, we call the equivalence class. of such a curve, gamma, um, a geometric tangent vector. Uh, of the manifold M at the point P. And if you've seen, uh, if you've seen the finite dimensional uh, uh, setting, then um, basically say uh, it's a finite dimensional picture. Say if your manifold is some sort of surface in a three dimensional space or something, and you have your point P sitting in here. So then we have, we have for example, such a curve going through here with uh, whose derivative is given by that. And I don't know perhaps another curve going here. So uh, these geometric uh, tangent vectors really give you speed and uh, velocity information of curves passing through the P here. Obviously, I cannot draw such a, such a picture for the infinite dimensional um, uh, space since we can't draw infinite dimensions, but the idea is the same. So, uh, and um, well, the geometric 
and we usually we drop the word geometric, that's why it's in brackets, but uh, geometric um, tangent space um, of M at uh, P is uh, the set T, P, M of all geometric tangent vectors at P, right? Okay, this is just a definition. In other, uh, in other literature, this is also called the, uh, um, the kinematic tangent space due to the picture on the right-hand side. I mean, uh, basically, when you think of the curves as giving you sort of the motion, say, of a, of a particle on the manifold or something, and then you, you are um, analyzing uh, this space captures the kinematics of, uh, of all the possible motions which are staying on the manifold but moving through uh, this point P. And uh, so let's, let's look at some technical lemmas which you will probably have seen either in in this version or in another version on finite dimension space, so there's actually no surprise here uh, for um, the infinite dimensional setting. So everything works at least with this definition as in finite dimensions. So if we fix uh, or if we look at a chart of M around uh, our point P, what this means is the P is supposed to be in the chart domain. Um, we set uh, P phi as phi of P. Then we can define a mapping H phi, which takes the model space into the kinematic, uh, sorry, the geometric tangent space at this point. And uh, how do we define H phi of uh, Y? H phi of H phi of Y. We define this as the equivalence class of T gets mapped to phi inverse of uh, P phi plus T Y. Right, and notice, uh, obviously, I mean, can, I can just define a curve which is going out from this P phi uh, in the direction Y and pull it back to a curve on our manifold. M uh, by this formula. However, the equivalence class is really an equivalence class of derivatives and um, uh, at, at the at time t equal to zero. So, and the claim here is that this is a bijection with uh, inverse h phi inverse from p p m taking values in e to send a class here uh, just to phi composed with gamma, take the derivative and evaluate at zero, right? Okay, so this is the first claim. Uh, then the second claim for all phi psi charts around P, we have uh, H psi inverse, if we compose this as H phi, uh, then we get uh, just the derivative of the change of charts. We get phi, uh, psi composed with phi inverse, we take the derivative at the point P phi, and then uh, what we have evaluated here. Uh, so uh, we have this, uh, we have this identity and this is uh, is an isomorphism mapping the locally convex space E to itself. Okay, um, and um, so the last statement is now a, a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, so. Basically, it says that this geometric tangent space at a point that admits a unique locally 
convex structure such that um, H phi is an isomorphism of uh, locally convex spaces for uh, one and again hence for all Uh, phi chart of M round P. Okay, so the proof of this is, is not difficult. It follows more or less from the definition. So let's uh, let's see um, what's going on here. Uh, first of all, note that uh, H phi and H phi inverse make sense and by definition the h phi inverse is injective let's uh, let's just take a look again upstairs what was that so i said the h phi we sent basically uh, a vector in e to the derivative of this curve uh, pulled back uh, by the uh, chart phi. So this guy here is a nice curve on our manifold and we can derivate this and certainly we land in the right tangent space. And um, here for the h phi inverse, we just see by the definition of the equivalence class, um, well, uh, if we evaluated the h, uh, if, we, if we evaluate the h phi inverse on two different equivalence classes, also the uh, thing marked in yellow needs to be different. Otherwise, they would have been the same class. So, by definition, the h phi inverse really is uh, injective. Okay, let's now uh, do the following. Um, uh, let now y be a direction in our, in our model space and let's compute h phi inverse and then we apply h phi of y here. So this is by definition d dt or t equal to zero of phi and then we have phi inverse of uh, the curve starting at p phi plus t y, and now well, so we have uh, we've basically uh, uh, applied just the definition of the mappings, and we see that the phi and the phi inverse this just gives us the identity. So we see that this is y. Um, this means that uh, h phi inverse is surjective. and uh, an inverse of h phi, right? So let's see what we had here, right? And now basically it follows from um, the h phi inverse being, uh, being a bijection, that also the h phi is uh, a bijection. And uh, if you want to have an easy exercise, Also, the h phi composed with h phi inverse is um, the identity on the geometric tangent space. So we are not doing this here. It's basically a similar, uh, similarly complicated uh, to what we have been doing. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, so this was the proof for part A, and. Um, Let's do the proof for B and C. So we know already that phi and psi, uh, h phi is a bijection. Let's see uh, this change of charts formula if, we want, uh, if you want. So we have h psi composed with h phi inverse of y. And this is by definition d dt at t equal to zero of, and well, and so here, up here on this one, we had two times the h phi. And this gave us this copy of phi and this copy of phi inverse. So now we have one times the psi 
in one times the psi, uh, phi. So this gives us psi uh, of phi inverse of p phi plus ty. And if we take the derivative of this guy, what this is, is um, uh, just the derivative in Bastiani sense of d phi composed with phi inverse. And then we are at the point p phi and we derivate in the direction of y. So this is actually exactly the formula uh, we get for um, we get for the uh, we we claimed in d, right? So we call we wanted to prove this formula, and now we have checked it uh, for a y. But uh, there was nothing special about the y, so this was for everything. And um, well. Uh, so um, note that uh, d psi composed with phi inverse, if we fix the point, we know uh, that this is linear uh, and continuous. Uh, and it's actually uh, uh, Topological, uh, sorry, a local, uh, an isomorphism of uh, locally convex spaces, and it's. I mean, I really don't need to say much about this because the inverse is super easy to write down. So it's phi composed with psi inverse. Uh, and this starts at p of psi. Then we have this. So we see that the, uh, that the inverse is also continuous linear, and so we get really an isomorphism of locally convex spaces. Okay. And um, now, since uh, we can change uh, change the charts, we get always an isomorphism of the underlying spaces. What this means uh, for C, we just define, um, well, if I have gamma and I have eta sitting inside the geometric tension space, what is the sum um, of those two things? Well, I just define it as we take H phi inverse of h phi of gamma plus h phi of eta. Sorry, I probably should have written here also a scalar lambda in here. So then we just take uh, the lambda, sorry, uh, let's take the lambda here. So in other words, what, what we are doing is we say, um, um, so this gives a vector space structure. Or in other words, TPM uh, gains the local or the unique locally convex structure turning H phi into an isomorphism of uh, locally convex spaces. This is a Looks a little bit like cheating, but uh, I mean we are, we already have this bijective map and we declare the topology and the vector space structure just in a way which makes this bijection an isomorphism of locally convex spaces, meaning it's a linear isomorphism and also a homeomorphism. So we just uh, pull back the topology using this bijection to a topology on uh, the geometric tangent space. Okay, and now um, let's. Before we can define the tangent bundle, let me introduce uh, another notation 
which uh, we will then afterwards expand to mappings or differentiable mappings between um, uh, between uh, fact, uh, between manifolds. So uh, first of all, we define a tangent map for a differentiable map which lives on an open subset of a locally convex space. Um, let's assume we have a C1 map. Uh, then we define the mapping of the tangent mapping. So capital TF, and this should be a mapping from U times E, taking now values in F times F. And what it does, it takes a vector X and a, uh, or a point X and a, and a vector V and sends this to the mapping. In the first component, we still have F of X. In the second component, we have F of X and then uh, or the derivative of F in the uh, at point X in the direction of, uh, of V. So this tangent mapping, oh, we call uh, TF the tangent map of um, F. Um, okay, first note, this allows us to rewrite the chain rule. Um, for differential mappings as follows. So if I have two mappings which are C1 and I can compose them, then it turns out that this is TF composed with TG. Um, and in a way, uh, we have seen the derivative for mappings between, local, uh, between open subsets of locally convex spaces. And uh, what this TF does, so it remembers the base point at which we are, uh, we are taking the derivative. So it maps a pair, or, so a point and uh, the, direction, uh, the direction in which we derivate to the image uh, of the point under the mapping F and the, the derivative. So we are basically attaching the tangent vector, if you want, if you interpret DF of X uh, derivated in the direction uh, V, as a, as a tangent vector, then we are just sort of shifting this tangent vector to the uh, to the image point under the F, right? And um, so this uh, construction we will now generalize to uh, to manifolds. Um, but first of all, I mean, uh, we need to define the so-called tangent bundle. Again, this will not be anything really new. So if you have seen it uh, for finite dimensional manifolds, the definition is essentially the same. Yeah, um, so we start with a CR manifold and uh, want to define the tangent bundle. Uh, obviously, R needs to be bigger than or equal than one, modeled uh, on uh, a locally convex space E. And uh, well, we call the collection of all tangent uh, spaces or geometric tangent spaces. We take all the geometric tangent spaces of um, over points at M. Well, um, so this is uh, a disjoint union of, of some spaces. We call this the tangent bundle. of M. Uh, and um, equip um, TM with the final topology with respect to uh, the family E phi inverse, so phi are charts, uh, where, how do we define this T phi inverse? Uh, so 
if uh, we go from the codomain of the chart from v5 times the model space into this tm and we send xv to the equivalence class uh, of uh, t gets mapped to phi inverse uh, x plus t y right these curves and this lies in the geometric tangent space over this point phi inverse of x and m. And uh, these guys t phi inverse, we call them the canonical parametrizations. You can, uh, in subtext, you also find them as canonical charts. Um, so those are canonical parametrizations. Uh, and um, so, uh, right, we have these canonical parametrizations and um, this, uh, the inverse of these mappings will give us what we call the canonical charts for the tangent manifold. Before we can define them, let's uh, consider another map. So pi uh, t, oh, sorry. Uh, probably I want to call this pi of m. This is the mapping going from tm to m. And if I have uh, something in the geometric tangent uh, space at m, so what, where is this mapped by this mapping uh, pi m? So this is just mapped to the base point. This is just the base point projection or uh, this is what is called the bundle projection. of this tangent bundle. So if you have seen vector bundles, then um, this construction turns a tangent bundle into a vector bundle over the, um, uh, this, uh, this turns the um, uh, tangent, bun uh, tangent manifold to a vector bundle over the manifold. If you don't know what a vector bundle is, just ignore this comment. And uh, so let's, uh, um, continue. So note that uh, T u phi, we define this as the inverse under the bundle projection of uh, the u phi is open in the topology on uh, Tm. This is probably not entirely clear at this point. Um, but you will check this in an exercise. So uh, we, we have the opportunity to check this. Uh, if you don't see it immediately, which is quite natural, then uh, we check this um, in, an, in an exercise that this is really true, again, together with all the rest of the uh, of the technical details, which I'm now hiding here. We will formulate them as, uh, as a lemma, but uh, okay. Um, so T phi is then defined as the inverse of these mappings. This will turn out to be a mapping from T u phi, taking values in V phi times E, uh, is what turns out to be a homeomorphism. And we can define an atlas B, uh, so of charts T phi, where the phi are sampled from uh, atlas A, uh, so this is a CR minus one atlas for TM modeled on E times E. Uh, thus TM becomes a CR minus one manifold. Um, and this bundle projection, uh, CR minus one uh, mapping. Uh, so it can't be more than a CR minus one mapping because it's going from a CR minus one manifold into a CR manifold. Um, okay. Um, right. So, so far, we have only constructed this for 
uh, or construct the tangent bundle. for uh, a manifold modeled on a single space E, right? But as I said, in general, we don't want to assume that this is modeled all on just one single space. Uh, so what we uh, what we can uh, what can we do to define the tangent bundle in the general case that we have many different uh, locally convex spaces? Uh, we have seen that the uh, locally convex space is isomorphic, or can assume that the same on a connected component. Uh, so if we can apply this whole construction to a connected component, um, uh, the construction to every connected component, we uh, obtain a tangent bundle for uh, uh, or for the general case. The general case here being that our manifold is not modeled on a single locally convex space. So there's no technical problem with that. It's just that it was convenient that we could use uh, a name for the modeling space. So uh, as a, as any, the general case. Okay, and now let me just formulate the things which uh, then uh, uh, one has to check to make all of the of the above work. So we had in the, in the definition. So um, basically, this lemma is collecting details for one three sixteen, and uh, we say let phi and psi be charts of our manifold. One thing we have, um, T of uh, psi composed with phi, inverse. And if we compose this with T phi, this gives us T psi. Then second thing, what I already claimed T u phi is open in TM and T um, ah sorry you am mixing up my phi's so this phi and this phi this phi so T phi from T U phi to V phi times E is a homeomorphism the next thing we want to check is that this assortment of mappings is a cr minus one atlas and uh, Tm is a Hausdorff space if M is Hausdorff. Well, in our case, this will always be the case since we are assuming that all manifolds are topological space and all topological spaces are, in this lecture at least, Hausdorff topological spaces. And uh, since pi M uh, is a CR map, minus one map, it's also something we have uh, we've claimed. And uh, lastly, which is also important, the TM induces on each TPM the uh, natural topology we defined in one, three, fourteen. Right, so um, we have said uh, we topologize the geometric tangent space TP with a, uh, with, a, with a locally convex topology, making it isomorphic to the model space. And uh, what is a priori not clear when we do this construction with the, uh, with, I mean, we have the tangent bundle and we induce, uh, we, um, 
endow it with the final topology with respect to these strange mappings T phi inverse. Um, so what's not clear is if you look at the geometric tangent space with the subspace topology of this final topology, then uh, that this will be the original topology we, we discussed before. But this is also true. Okay. And, uh, right. So let's see. Um, okay. Uh, let's do the proof of this. Um, let's see what we can do. So what was A again? So A is just this formula for um, what happens if we have the T phi, uh, T psi composed with phi inverse composed with uh, T phi, uh, this T psi. On one hand, uh, recall that this guy we have here, psi composed with phi inverse, this is a mapping between open spaces of, uh, so open subsets of uh, locally convex spaces. So what we really mean by this mapping here is uh, we mean the mapping we have here in the definition 1, 3, 15, right? So we really mean that uh, the mapping which, uh, well, if F is the change of charts, which um, is given by the change of charts in the first component and the derivative of the change of charts in the second component. If you write down what this formula we are about to prove means, then you see that um, in the first component, uh, where we just have the usual um, change of charts, uh, not much is happening. And for the second component, um, this is exactly from lemma 1, 3, 14, B. And this is left in an exercise. And so it's basically crawling through what, how are these mappings defined? Um, okay, let's see, what is B? B says, well, this T U phi is open in TM and uh, T phi is a homeomorphism. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's phi and psi B and A. So what we have is uh, T psi inverse, inverse, this was the T psi uh, of T U phi is uh, t psi of t u phi dissected with t u phi uh, psi sorry phi and psi easy to get mixed up and what this is this is psi of u phi uh, intersected with u psi times the space e and recall this guy is open in E, and therefore this whole affair here, so we have an open set Cartesian product with the whole space. So this is an open subset of uh, V phi times E, uh, V psi, I should be psi. Uh, it's getting late. Okay, so this is open. So what we see is, um, base, uh, that T psi inverse, inverse of T u phi is open in, uh, let's say, E times E. Since uh, the topology is uh, the final one with respect to the uh, T psi inverse, um, this implies that uh, T u phi is open in the topological space we just defined, right? So we take we took the union and topologized it with the final topology with respect to the T psi inverse. Okay. Um, okay. So now what we have to see or what we want to prove is that um, the T phi 
actually is a homeomorphism. We already know that the TU5 is open and we have to prove that uh, the T phi is, um, uh, is um, a homeomorphism. So by definition of the final topology, we already know that um, T phi inverse, and this is the same as T phi um, uh, inverse is continuous. And what this means is uh, that the T phi is an open map, right? So if the inverse is continuous, then the, uh, the original map needs to be an open map in the topological sense, mapping open sets to open sets. For the continuity of uh, T phi, um, let us pick some open set U sitting inside of the uh, codomain of the uh, map T5 and uh, let's uh, Psi again be another chart. So what we want to do is uh, we want to test, uh, basically we want to see that T5 inverse of the U, uh, the question is, is this open in the TM? Right? And the way we test this is we are testing it against um, a chart uh, um, T psi because we have the final topology again. So let us define an auxiliary set W, which is thus U um, intersected with phi of U phi intersected with U psi. This is open times E. And so we get an open subset of uh, V phi times E. <sighs> uh, yeah, so, well, now what a quick computation shows, if we just apply T psi inverse, inverse to the T phi inverse of U, then, and you check this out that this is really true, this is T psi composed with phi inverse. I mean, basically what we're using here is A uh, of the W. And this is then an open subset of V psi times E. So what the upshot is, um, since the psi was arbitrary, the topology on um, TM final with respect to uh, the T psi inverse, we see that um, T phi inverse of U is open in TM when T phi is continuous. So it con we conclude that the T phi is a homeomorphism. Uh, unfortunately, this step is a little bit horrible because you have to juggle with the final topology. If this is a bit um, fast, then I recommend that you sit down and uh, just have a, have a closer look at uh, all the definitions of these mappings. And then you will see that the, the somewhat uh, strange looking formula will work out here just by definition of the mapping. So there's not much more. Um, so let's prove C. What was C again? Uh, right, we want to see that this is uh, the T phi, they form a CR minus one atlas. Okay, so we know already by B that um, 
uh, the T phi uh, phi and A. Uh, so those are homeomorphisms. Whose uh, domains T U phi cover the whole tangent manifold. Oh, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say tangent manifold. We don't know yet, except explicitly that it's a manifold. But uh, so this will be uh, what we call the tangent manifold, right? The reason for this is we have seen that this is just the uh, inverse. Of the bundle projection of the U phi, and um, since the atlas A or the charts and the chart domains of the atlas A cover the manifold M, we basically get everything which sits above uh, points in M. So we really get everything in the tangent manifold or in the geometric tangent space. So um, uh, the transition the transition maps. Perhaps we should record this. So therefore. Uh, uh, Okay, that's okay. Right, so the transition maps are uh, so we need to have T psi uh, composed with T phi inverse, and by A, we know that this is T of psi composed with phi inverse. Um, and uh, what this is, so locally we can write this on some open set as psi composed with phi. And here the second component is d psi composed with phi inverse, and then of some arguments. Okay, we see that this is a CR map because we have a CR atlas. And if we derivate this uh, change of charts, we get a CR minus one map. So in total, uh, the transition maps are CR minus one. Okay, and uh, Hausdorff property of uh, TM is left as an exercise. Okay, so what the whole upshot of this is, the tangent manifold is as a topological space, is really a Hausdorff topological space. And uh, using these charts, that, uh, or these set of homeomorphisms, the T phi, uh, these, are, uh, these give us a canonical atlas for the tangent manifold. And we will usually call these T phi the canonical charts of the tangent manifold. Okay, so we are now done with C. What was D again? So we still have two items on our list. Aha, we want that the bundle um, projection pi of m is a CR minus one map. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, let's consider this in charts. Um, so if phi is a chart of the original manifold, then what do we get? Uh, if we compose phi with the bundle projection, um, so it turns out that by definition, uh, so say for example, we have this here, we project down. Um, uh, so what this is, is just the projection onto the first component of this mapping T phi. So where projection onto the first component is going from v phi, v phi times e to v phi. This projection. And the projection is uh, the restriction of a continuous linear map. Um, so this is a smooth map. Okay. And what we see here is now that phi composed with pi m, composed with t phi inverse. So we are checking in charts, in the canonical charts, what it is. We see that it's given by the restriction 
of the uh, of a smooth map. So we see that the charts conjugate this to a smooth map, and therefore. I am is conjugated smooth map in canonical charts. It is a CR minus one map. This again looks a bit strange uh, since in the charts it's smooth, but recall. Uh, the tangent manifold is just a CR minus one manifold. So, uh, we, I mean, the change of charts are just of class CR minus one. And um, what this means is we, uh, the best differentiability class we can hope for is uh, the class CR minus one. So we cannot have more. Okay. Um, and finally, um, that the induced topology um, um, is really the one we started with um, follows directly from lemma 1314 C uh, by uh, part B of this proof. So let's let's take it uh, let's make it quick here. Um, this is probably something one needs to digest. So I re recommend to, for the proof of, of E to just uh, read again what this lemma 1314C was and what we have proved in B that basically the homeomorphism property we have here and um, see that this, uh, this really follows directly from the definition and uh, our proof of the homeomorphism. Okay, Oof. yeah, this was a lot of work. Um, that's, uh, we have still a little bit of time and uh, we are almost done with this chapter, so let's uh, let's finish. Uh, so we have now tangent manifolds, and let's define tangent maps. So if uh, f from a manifold M to a manifold N is a CR map, um, then we define the mappings T, P, F from the geometric tangent space at point P of M to the geometric tangent space at point F of P at N, sending a curve to the equivalence class of F composed with this curve, right? And so um, we can do this obviously for every P in M. So this is the tangent map of F at the te uh, geometric tangent space at point P. Okay. Um, note, this might seem a little bit strange, but uh, this formula is actually more important than it looks because it will tell us a nice way to compute um, tangent maps um, just by, by looking at what is happening on C1 uh, curves, right? So we can, we can then compose with C1 curves, uh, take the derivative at, uh, along the C1 curve and see what is happening with the vectors. Um, okay, so, and if we have the, now the tangent maps at some point P, then we uh, define the tangent map Um, tf. So this should now something going uh, be going from the tangent manifold of M into the tangent manifold at N, and we set it up that at um, every geometric tangent space, uh, this mapping is just tpf of um, well, this class gamma, or in other words, it's f composed with gamma sitting inside of tft. At n. Okay, this gives us uh, this gives us a mapping um, by construction. Um, if we compose with the bundle projection, then we get the original mapping, uh, and 
for each um, pair of charts uh, psi of n and uh, phi of m such that f of u phi is contained in u psi we obtain a commutative diagram which is of the following kind so t u phi and we are going over here with a tangent mapping restricted should decide on a way to write phi's. Um, restricted to this, then co-restricted to the u psi. The u psi here, that the canonical chart of the tangent spaces goes to v psi times f. So f is the model space of n. Here we have the canonical chart with phi, t, uh, sorry, t, we have v phi times e, and in between here we have the mapping t of psi composed with f composed with phi inverse. Um, right, and this mapping here, this is now between open subsets of the, of the model space. So this means this mapping is given as phi epsi composed with f composed with phi inverse, and then d psi composed with f composed with phi inverse. Right. So this was the original definition we had uh, for tangent mappings between open subsets of locally convex spaces. Um, thus, um, t f is c r minus one map if uh, f is a CR map. Okay, so this is the tangent map, which, um, um, for, I mean, in these lecture notes, we will always denote by the T and the tangent map. This will always be uh, a mapping of, um, uh, between the tangent bundles. And uh, we will always have a mapping which is locally looks like these two components. So on one hand, we have the component which looks like the base map. And uh, then we have the second component which will, uh, will be looking like the derivative of the base map. And um, sometimes, uh, sometimes the at least finite dimensional literature is not very clear on what it means. Sometimes uh, in the finite dimensional literature, when people say tangent map, they... Uh, actually mean just the second part here, so the derivative part. Whereas whenever I am talking about attention map, we, it will be essential that this is not only the derivative part, but also the base point uh, part, which uh, is here underscored in red. Okay, and um, now let's uh, give sort of a nice little lemma here, which is clear from uh, the uh, uh, from the um, chain rule in charts. Um, so if uh, M, N, L are CR manifolds and uh, F from M to N and uh, G from N to L are CR maps, then um, the chain rule says T of G composed with F is the same as T of G composed with T of F. Okay. This is, this is sort of the version, the manifold version of the chain rule, whereas, uh, I mean, we already knew that uh, the composition of uh, CR mappings between manifolds is again a CR mapping, but uh, now using these uh, tangent maps we get a nice uh, uh, we get a nice form of the chain rule using these t uh, mappings. Okay, and 
now, um, of course, if uh, M is a uh, CR manifold, we can iterate the construction. and um, construct the kth uh, tangent bundle t k m and this is just defined as to take t of t of t and so forth of t m where you have here k times the t and to make sense of this so the k needs to be of course smaller than r um, so and uh, similarly one can define higher tangent maps t k f where again, this is defined as T of and so forth of TF. Again, here we have K times the iterative one. Okay, let's uh, do one example. Let's assume that U is an open subset of E and see what the tangent bundle of U will be. So this is a manifold given by the chart uh, yota, which sends u into e x to x. And now let's see what happens if we uh, if we do this construction of the tangent bundle. Uh, so basically. We have, we have this one chart and we need to make sense of um, uh, these canonical charts we have been constructing here, right? So let's go upstairs to the, to the definition. So we have the uh, T phi inverse, which is given by this formula. Okay, let's see what this means in our case here. So we have this one chart uh, and let's see what the formula T yota inverse uh, of, so this should be something which uh, goes from, let's see, signature wise, this goes from the co-domain of the chart, which is just U times the vector space E, and this goes to T U. Okay, and what does it do? So it takes an X and a Y, and sends it to Yota inverse of, or sorry, actually it sends it to the equivalence class of curves. T gets mapped to Yota inverse of X plus T Y. Okay, now the situation is uh, very simple here. So we have this one uh, global chart and what is the Yota inverse? The Yota inverse and the Yota is just the identity. Uh, so this is just the curve X plus T Y. Or in other words, um, we can really just uh, taking the derivative here we can uh, uh, we can really just identify points in TU just with the base point x and the derivative, right? So uh, we get this global isomorphism. Uh, uh, sorry, global homo homeomorphism. So T yota inverse is a homeomorphism. Identifying. T u with u times e. So we can write T 
to you is isomorphic to u times e. And um, sometimes one is sloppy and uh, let's let's go of the of the isomorphism or the homeomorphism sign and just write um, an equality here. And what is the pi uh, of the u? This should go from t u takes values in u. However, we can use our chart. So we know that this is isomorphic to u times e. And here we have the mapping, which is just the projection onto the first component, right? So for open subsets of uh, locally convex spaces, all of these identifications are more or less trivial, right? So we can just use a global chart to identify our um, tangent bundle as the open subset times the locally convex space. So um, this gets a lot easier. Uh, and we uh, will check tomorrow in the exercises that um, several of these, con I mean, we have, we have now done two constructions actually for a tangent map. Um, so when you look here at the tangent mappings, we have defined tangent mappings for mappings between manifolds. And before, we also defined tangent mappings for open subsets of uh, uh, locally convex spaces in a different way. So we were not using this curve construction. However, what you will see in the exercises is that uh, both constructions lead to the same concept of tangent map. So you actually get on the nose the same mapping when you uh, do the same definitions. Uh, this should, however, be checked that everything fits again together nicely. And uh, as a last thing for today, let's do a final remark. Um, so what happens usually in finite dimensions one uh, defines uh, usually right after uh, the tangent bundle the so-called dual bundle. And the dual bundle is given, and so it's usually written as T star of M. And this is by definition, you take the union for all P uh, in M, and then you take the continuous linear mappings from uh, your tangent space at uh, M, in with values in the reals. So this is the dual bundle because, uh, I mean, another uh, usual notation for this is you write TPM prime. So this is the dual space of this locally convex space TPM. And in finite dimensions, what you see then uh, is that, uh, so if uh, the dimension of M is smaller than infinity, uh, then uh, there is a, a topology on uh, T star M turning it into a manifold, and in fact, a vector bundle over uh, M. However, in our setting, um, so, uh, on uh, the infinite dimensional manifolds. We are working on. There is in general no good topology um, on the dual bundle. This in general, of course, I mean, for uh, say Hilbert spaces, for example, there you can can define a dual bundle. It's no problem. Uh, sorry, Hilbert manifolds, meaning a manifold modeled on a Hilbert space. Uh, so there's in general no topology uh, turning uh, T star M into a um, vector bundle over M. And this is a problem 
um, if you want to define um, differential forms as sections into a dual bundle or a higher version of the dual bundle. Uh, so you cannot, at least in this setting, you cannot define uh, differential forms using this dual bundle because there's, uh, there's no nice topology on the dual bundle, which you can exploit to this. However, um, there is a way around this. Uh, this is just a remark for, uh, again, for general education purposes. Since in this lecture, we won't uh, take a look at differential forms. So we we'll avoid differential forms for nothing. We, we want to do differential forms are important. Um, and um, all I want to say is uh, there is a way one can define differential forms without topologizing the dual bundle. This uh, actually poses no problem. However, um, uh, just be aware that there's no good topology on the dual bundle because these uh, dual spaces of locally convex spaces are somewhat fickle, at least when it comes to these uh, manifold constructions. Okay, and uh, so this concludes basically this chapter on tangent manifolds. Um, and we are at an end of today's lecture.